Plain Spark had an outstanding day today. Riot also doing very well. Bitcoin on the rise. Let's have a look at the charts right now. Before we get started, go ahead and smash that like button. That is greatly appreciated anytime that you do that for me. Thank you in advance. So let's take a look at what happened to CleanSpark today. We were up a insane 19.88%. At one point, we were up over 20% today. We made a new cycle high today at $24.12. So we got up to $24.12 today, slightly above the previous high that was at uh, $23.40. So we closed at that same high there, $23.40. In the after hours, we are going down a little bit, which is to be expected. Remember, CleanSpark has that shelf offering still on the table. Anytime you see big strength like this, expect a little bit of a pullback afterwards as they dilute a little bit of the shares uh, going into this strength. So that's pretty exciting news right now. That's making us look super bullish. We got out of this descending channel. And as long as we hold above $21.50, we are solidly in the upward ascending channel once more, moving on up potentially to the top of this channel, which would take us up to the near 30, $29, $30 level on Clean Spark. So that's very exciting. So that's that's the upside. On the downside, we have now our new level that we're looking at is about $18. $18 is our new pivot point right now. We need to stay above $18. If we fail to do that, we are going to come down to this shelf of volume here at $17.11, which will fight through down to $16.22. And if we get through that spike of volume, we're going back down to $15, potentially below. So that is how that's going to go. We need to stay above $18. If that fails, $17.20 to $16.20 is some pretty solid uh, support. For us, uh, if we go underneath that $18 pivot point there, and then below that, $15 will be our last line of defense before we're coming down even further if that were to happen. I don't necessarily see that happening, uh, especially, I mean, we had a 19, almost 20% day today. I think tomorrow we'll probably see a bit of a pullback, maybe 3 4%, maybe 5 And I think a lot of that will be dilution and some profit taking because, I mean, it's just um, anytime you make 19% as a day is absolutely nuts. So that's clean spark. Let's take a look at Riot. Riot did something fantastic today. It closed and in post is holding above this spike of volume, this volume spike here. We are in the void here. We, we closed out inside the void of this volume profile. The only thing in our way now is a little bit of volume going up to about $13.22. Above that, we're going all the way to 15 real fast once we get up there. Um, so we are in the pocket. We're up 9.12% today on Riot. Things are looking good there. Let me get rid of some of these lines. I don't need this many lines anymore. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. Okay. So we are above five day and the 15 day moving average on Riot. We closed just below the 50 and the 200. I think if things can remain positive for Riot for the rest of the week, I think we can co potentially conquer the 200 and the 50 day moving average on this chart, which would take us up over $13, which will be, I think, potentially our launching pad to come up to that $15 level. Like we'll come up to like 13, 13, 50. We'll come back, test the 50 and the 200, which will be about the same level around that point in time, and tap it and then move on up to that $15 level from there on right. I think that's what's going to happen there. Now, of course, that this is not financial advice nor a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold any assets whatsoever. It's simply the technicals on the chart, and we'll see if they play out. Technicals only make up you know, 70% of what is going to happen. The rest is all news, black swan events, potentially manipulation. In the case of the Bitcoin miners, dilution is also a big factor to play in there, as well as the price of Bitcoin itself. But from January uh, 12th to January 29th, we did that like hook sort of move, which is very similar to the one we did from March 5th until March 21st. And then we came down in a bit of a 
handle pattern, which we're kind of forming right now, a little bit of, we could form a little bit of a handle if we can stay up and above this area here in the top half of that handle. And we launched from there. This is looking very similar. We came down aggressively, scooped up, came back, touched the 15, much like we went here, right? We came down aggressively, scooped up, came down, tested the 15, stayed down on it for one, two, three, four, five days and then launched off of it. So now we're only on the second day of testing at 15 day EMA or SMA, excuse me. And if we came down like two, three more days, hovering in this area, holding strong around that 12 to 1250 range. After we do that, if we get a breakout above this 250 day SMA, just like back here where we crossed them, we crossed the 201 day and the second day we crossed the 50. If we could get over those in like one or two days um, later this week or early next week, we're looking at 15 very, very fast on right. So that's what's going on with that with right. Bitcoin, Bitcoin also looking very uh, positive today. It was up 5.41% today. We are forming this cup I mentioned. We have to come back up to $73,000 on it. So we came down, we're coming up on this side. We need to go up to that 73,000 to make that cup, right? That would be the cup. And then we can come back and test 69,000, about 69, 68,000, that area. And from there, we could use that potentially as a launch pad to make that cup and handle taking us up to that $80,000 level from there if that formation plays out. And $80,000 is a very strategic price point where we see a lot of resistance at that $80,000 level. There's a lot of theories out there that 80,000 is the highest that Bitcoin could possibly go simply because of a volume shelf. Now, uh, those were without the ETFs in play, but I still think that 80,000 will pose a, a formidable level for Bitcoin to cross. And once it crosses it, I think that uh, $100,000 is going to quickly follow once we get past that $80,000. But I do think that will be a formidable level that will hold us back for a little bit of time. And now that I've said that, watch it just slice right through 80 and go to 100 in a single day. That'd be amazing. It'd make me very wrong, but it'd be amazing. Uh, but we do have good volume here to hold us around the $68,000, $67,000 level that could be a launch pad taking us up, much like with CleanSpark, where we came to the 15. We kind of got stuck in this volume here between $17, $20, and $15. And then that was like a launch pad up on several different occasions. And we could see something similar like that around the 68 to 60 or 67 to $69,000 level on Bitcoin. Let's take a look at MicroStrategy. How did that do today? I'm assuming it's going to be about 10% up. Was it 10% up? It was 21% up. If you're in the MicroStrategy play, you are doing exceptionally well. And it is continuing to go up in after hours. Look at this structure, though. Look at how it came down to the 15 bounced right off the 15, went up a little bit, false break, came back to the 15, and then just launched immediately off of it. That's the kind of thing I want to see. In fact, this is a very, very bullish chart, constantly bouncing off the 5 or the 15, moving average, uh, even back here, uh, back on February 23rd, where we just absolutely launched off the 15-day moving average all the way up to nearly $2,000, and we're doing the same thing again right now off of that 15 moving average on micro strategy. That is just it's such a strong looking, <laughs> such a strong looking stock. Almost none of this volume is really falling off. Too, I mean, it is decreasing in volume, but it's like barely doing so. And we do have a bit of RSI divergence on micro strategy. We have a higher high and a lower RSI right now. So if we were to break underneath this 15 day moving average and hold beneath it, I would expect a larger fall, possibly, you know, a correction of 20, 30% potentially if that were to happen. So keep that on your radar and watch it. Now let's look at Mara. How did Mara do today? Mara was up 0.38%, so it lagged. There's so many drawings on this. Let me let me hide those. That's just dramatic. Uh, let me close this one too. So Mara is getting stuck between the 15 and the 50 moving average. We got a bit of a shooting star candle today. That is not good. We are down in after hours. Mara's looking a bit weak. It's having a bit of trouble getting over this $23, $24 level. But I think once it does achieve that, we're going to make this $34 range look like a thing of the past once we get up there uh, overneath, over this sh volume shelf right here. And I think that, or this volume ceiling right here. And then we do have that support at that $18 level for us if we were to come down further on Mara. How did Bit Digital do today? Bit Digital, mm, 241, we were down 0.84%. So it's also very lackluster and weak today. 
it does look like we want to come down a little more, maybe bounce again off the 15 here at 232, hopefully not go under it. Uh, this 50-day moving SMA really is proving to be a strong level of resistance that we need to get above, and then that'll only let us get to $3 before we hit the 200, which is also going to be a very dramatic level of resistance for us to get past that $3 level, and there's tons of volume in the way, so we've got to chew through all this volume. And then we get a little bit of an air pocket at 350 up to 415 where we run into more resistance. And then once we get past that 4, like 30 level is the sky's the limit from there on Bit Digital. Let's look at Bit Farms real quick. And this will be the last one that I look at today for it now. Also down 0.87%. So almost like it's orchestrated. Uh, <laughs> this is... Also kind of stuck in a bit of volume right now. We're seeing a lot of volume we have to chew through to get above up to this 50 SMA at 259. That's going to be strong resistance. And then we have strong support here at 218 and then below that at 206. And then the, the 200 day SMA is looming down below at 183, which we could potentially come down and tap. But I'm not really expecting that. I do think we'll probably hold it about $2 at the most at the, at the lowest and then we'll come back to this 50 SMA and fight that for a moment before chewing through the rest of this volume. And once we get above $3.08, again, sky's the limit, just like on the others here. We are seeing a bit of a cup and handle form uh, on the Bit Farms chart. It is looking exactly like the same setup as before. We are in the second dip here before the rip, just like what we saw back in February. Uh, that is what I'm expecting. I'm expecting a repeat of this chart from January. 12th until February 7th. I'm expecting that exact same formation to play out right here. And the only way that I'm going to say that that isn't happening is if price goes below this $2.11 right here, if it gets below this lower low from before. If we conquer um, $2.56, if we get above $2.56 before we go below $2.11. I'm going to say that this is probably the same formation as back here. And as soon as we see a gap up day, it's going to be gap up and go from there on this chart. So that's all I've got for you today. Please like, comment, and subscribe and have a profitable day.